welcome back. Time to start coding our backdoor. So in this video, we're going to start with the base of our program. Remember that we must create two different programs, a server and a backdoor. And it doesn't matter with which one we start, so let's in this case start coding the server first. We're going to code both of them simultaneously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the terminal and remember that we have this tools directory from the first project. Let us navigate to there. And instead of the port scanner, we're going to make another subdirectory inside of here and call this backdoor. Then we're going to change the directory to the subdirectory and here we're going to code our tools. So as I said, let's start with server first. To do that, we type server.py. We open it using nano and here we're going to code our project. So what's the first thing that we must do? Well, since these two programs are going to communicate with one another, they must establish a connection first. And we know that we can do that with the help of a socket library. So socket allows us to initiate an internet connection between two machines. So how are we going to do that? Well, first thing that we must do and that we also did inside of our port scanner is we must initiate a socket object. And I'm going to call my socket object soc inside of the server.py. And to initiate it, I will type socket.socket. .socket. So we're doing this with the help of the socket library. And here in the brackets, we want to specify two different parameters. Socket.af underscore init, comma, socket dot soc underscore stream. And I know what you're thinking, what even are these arguments? Well, this socket.af underscore init tells our program that we're going to make a connection over IPv4 address. And the socket.soc stream tells our program that we're going to use the TCP connection. So simple as that. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to bind the IP address and the port. This is something that we already did inside of our first project. So there's nothing really too much to explain right here. We just type soc and use the method.bind open two and close two brackets. And the first parameter is going to be the IP address of our Cal Linux machine. In my case, if I go and check it out, this is .1.12. So we'll go right here and specify 192.168.1.12 as the first parameter. And remember, it must be between the quotes. Then I will specify comma and the port that we're going to use. Well, we can just go with port 5555. Why not? It doesn't even matter, to be honest. After we do all of this, we binded the IP address with the port. And now the next thing that we must do is we must start listening for the incoming connections. Remember, this was the crucial part in the reverse shells. The target executes a payload, but we must listen for the incoming connections. And that is exactly what our server program will do. It will listen for the connections. And once the target executes a payload, they will connect to our server program. So to do that, we can first print like this. Let us print listening for the incoming connections, just so we know at which part of the program we are. And below that, we can type soc.listen, and we're going to specify five in the brackets, meaning that we're going to listen up to five different connections. Okay, so our program will now be stuck on this part until the connection is established. Once the target tries to connect back to us, we need to store their connection in a few variables. In other sense, we need to store their socket object that we're going to use to communicate with the target. And we're also going to split that into an IP address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type target comma IP. These are going to be two separate variables and they're going to be equal to soc.accept. And this accept method is simply just accepting the incoming connection and storing the target's socket object right here and the IP address in the second variable. Simple as that. Once we do that, and once the connection is accepted, we can print that target connected and we can add from. And what we're going to do here is we're going to close the quote and add a plus sign and then the string of the IP variable. And once again, remember the IP variable will store the IP address of the target. 
So what we're essentially doing right here is we're printing that we got the connection from the target's IP address. Okay, we need to close one more bracket right here. And what we're going to do at the end is we're just going to enter a function called target communication. Now, of course, this function doesn't exist and we're going to code it in some future video. But for now, on, let's just leave it right here. We successfully created a socket object, binded the IP address with the port, we listened for the incoming connections, and at the end, we accepted the connection from our target system. We're going to leave it at this for now on our server program, and let's go to our backdoor program. Now we need to figure out the code for our backdoor to make it connect to our server.py. So first thing that we're going to do is of course to import the socket library. Then as in the server program, we need to initiate the socket object and I'm not going to call it sock right here, I'm just going to call it s. And here we're going to specify the same parameters, socket.af underscore inet, comma, socket.sock underscore stream. We already explained what these are, and the only thing that we need to do right here is we need to connect to our target machine. But we're not going to use the connect method right here. What we're going to do is we're going to call the connection function. And of course, this is a function that doesn't exist, so we must code it up here. Let's define it first, so define connection. It will take no parameters between the brackets. And what we're going to do is we're going to type right here, try, which is the try statement. So it will try to connect to our Linux machine. And remember the connect function requires two open and two close brackets, the same way that the bind function does. And it also takes the two parameters, which the first one is the IP address of the machine that we want to connect to. So this will be the IP address of Kalinux machine once again, and the port will be once again the port 5555 because we want to connect to that port, since our server program will be listening on that port. If it manages to connect, we're going to enter a second function which is going to be called shell. And this shell function also doesn't exist, we're going to code it, and what will be the purpose of this shell function is executing the commands. So for now on, we're just going to leave it right here, and we're going to code it later. Once we leave the shell function, we can close the socket object. And in the accept statement, we can call again this connection function. Now you might be wondering, why are we doing this? Well, if I add something like this right here, so I go and type while true, which is remember the infinite loop, and I tab all of these commands once, so they can belong to the while true loop. And right here, I'm going to also add a statement time.sleep. And give me just one second, I will explain why I'm doing this. Let me just code the function till the end. I will break right here and I will import the time library because we're going to need it since we use it right here. So what are we doing right here? We're calling the connection function. This connection function starts an infinite while true loop. This infinite while true loop sleeps for 20 seconds, and then it tries to connect to our Linux machine. If it manages to connect, it will go inside of the shell function where we will execute the commands on the target system. If it doesn't manage to connect, it will go into this accept statement and it will call the same function once again. So what does this tell you? It will run this function infinitely until it manages to connect. So this is good because of one reason. We don't want our target to start the payload and not be able to connect just because we haven't started the server yet. We want to be able to connect to the target system whenever we want. So this function will tell the payload to try to connect to every 20 seconds. Every 20 seconds while their machine is running, this program will try to connect to our Linux machine. So we can start the server at any point of time and after 20 seconds, it will establish a connection to us. So this is just calling this function over and over again until this line right here works and they connect to us. Then we enter a second function, which is the shell function. Okay, this is the base of our backdoor.py. Here is how we are going to connect to our server. And in the next video, we're going to see 
what we're going to do with the contents of the shell function. And if I save this, control O, and also the target communication function. So these are the functions that will receive and execute commands. Feel free to post any question if you have about the code, if there is something that you do not understand. And in the next lecture, we're going to continue with the coding of our programs. See you there.